Hey guys, it's Steph, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good, or if you're new here, then hello, how you doing? Let's do like a little awkward handshake. If you're not putting your hand out right now, do it. Go on, I dare you. That was nice, that's nice, isn't it? Yep, okay, welcome, hi. I was gonna say if you're new here, then maybe consider subscribing, turn on notifications, liking, commenting, whatever, but I understand if you don't wanna do that after that awkward interaction. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna put my hand down. In today's video, I'm trying out a whole load of makeup that I picked up the other day from the drugstore, AKA Boots, Superdrug, Boots and Superdrug. I have a mix of everything from Flower Beauty that I haven't tried out in a while, bit of MUA, we've got a bit of misguided makeup, cause misguided makeup is now in Superdrug. Didn't know that until recently, so looking forward to trying that out. And yeah, basically today, I'm just gonna be trying out a whole lot of things that I picked up recently in a haul. If you haven't seen that haul, I hadn't done one in a while and I kind of went ham on the aisles of Superdrug and Boots and all these different places. So if you guys wanna see that, I'll link it down below. But yeah, we've got a lot to get through today and I'm very, very excited about some of these products. So let's get into the video. I almost picked up my candle then to drink, but this is what I need. This is my nourishment. Cherry Pepsi Max, yes. Always tastes better in a pint glass, it always does. I'm like trying to find a headband here. Oh, I haven't used this one in ages. Okay. Mm. Gorgeous, beautiful, stunning. Why is my forehead so shiny today? So first of all, for primer, I have this one from Barry M. This is the Fresh Face Illuminating Primer, and I have it in the shade Warm. I think they had a cool one and a warm one. And this, I swatched it in my haul video. It just kind of looks like a moisturizer. Oh my God, what is, why am I covered in like black dirt? What is that? I'm just gonna wipe it on my leg. So it just looks like this, just looks like a moisturizer and it's quite heavily fragranced, but I like the smell of it. It kind of smells like perfume. It just smells like a nice perfume to be honest. So just a heads up. Doesn't really seem to have any shimmer particles in it or anything like that. Ooh, look how shiny that has made my foreheads. Like, this is glass skin. This is like double glazing glass skin. Okay, so we can definitely see it's very, very sheeny. It feels quite nice on the skin. It's sunk in really, really quickly. There doesn't seem to be any residue or anything like that, and it feels fairly hydrating. So now for my brows, I'm gonna be using the new Come At Me Brow Brow Balm. This is from Misguided, and it says it's a brow styling balm with a spoolie. And it says that you just apply it directly to your brow, so it's not like a soap or anything like that. Let's see, I always like to, I always like to bend the spoolie a little bit just so I can get right in there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know, do I need to like really coat the brush? Cause I feel like that's not gonna do much for me. Hello Pepe, you've realized that your screaming isn't gonna do anything, have you? Meow. <laughs> this feels very, it doesn't really feel like it's doing much, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Has a mirror in the compact, which is nice. I'm just gonna try and brush it through my brows. Um. It's taken a minute. I feel like this spoolie's maybe not the best. I think I have another one in here. Yeah, I'm gonna try a slightly bigger spoolie because that one is just not tackling my eyebrow hairs. Get in there. Okay, here we go. I feel like I need a more like dense spoolie, like a plastic one almost, just because you do have to like push the product in quite a lot to get it to do anything. I mean, granted, my eyebrow hairs are maybe not the norm. They're literally like wire half the time. So I feel like most people probably be fine, but if you have thick eyebrow hairs, I'm talking like three C's kind of thick, then you might want to get a separate spoolie because this one just, it's just not making a dent on my slugs. And because it's quite a thick product, look, I'm brushing and I need to really make sure I comb them through. It's probably a better idea to actually brush them through beforehand. So note to self. Yeah, I really, really like how it looks. I feel like it's gonna keep my brows in place all day. It is just a bit of a faff to kind of like brush it through, but once they're down, this is like full on soap brow sort of situation. Oh, they might be a bit too werewolf, but it's fine. It's fine, okay. Maybe I'll try this brush. It's literally like a back combing brush. Am I really doing this? You bet your asses I am. Why is, why is this brush? working better than an actual eyebrow brush. Like, I actually need, my eyebrows actually need to, to calm down. Do you know what? I like that this just feels literally like a balm to my brows. I don't know how else to explain it. It doesn't feel crispy, doesn't feel soap-like. My brows feel like they can still move, but they're not going to, because they're just sort of like gelled in the right place. I do feel like this spoolie isn't enough, and I do also kind of feel like a bigger size spoolie isn't enough. You want something that's a little bit more sturdy to actually maneuver the product, but yeah. Into that, I just need to figure out like the best way to apply it and just like 
get it through these forests on my forehead. So now for my base, I have this foundation here from Maybelline. I've tried the Superstay before, but this is a Superstay active wear. It says that it's supposed to last up to 30 hours. I'm not gonna try that out today, but let me know if you guys want like another testing 24 hour makeup video because I did one years ago and I can 100% do one again, just pray for my skin in advance. So this one here is in the shade Warm Sun. They didn't have any testers or anything like that. So hopefully, that looks all right. Hopefully the color will be okay. It's quite liquidy. Ooh, that looks like a pretty decent color to go with my fading fake tan. I opted for like a higher neck shirt today because honestly, what's going on under here, the tan is disappearing. But I really wanted to film, I wanted to try some new products. Um, so yeah, if you notice any patchy tan, like around my wrists and my hands, it ain't looking too hot, but it's fake tan day today. So just, just let me have this moment, okay? So I'm going in, I think this is my third pump. It says it feels light as air and it's full coverage. I would say this feels very, very light. I feel like that's why I'm going in with a bit more because it really, it's a very, very lightweight, thin foundation, but it does have good coverage. I wouldn't necessarily say like full, full coverage, but it's like a medium to full. Okay, I'm going in with a tiny little bit more just to go kind of over my nose. I'm gonna go straight over my eyelids with it as well. I'm really, really happy with how that looks on my skin. It's got a nice little bit of glow to it. Maybe that might have been the primer as well, but yeah, it's got a nice little glow. The color's nice, the undertone's nice, and it does feel really, really light on my skin. It doesn't really feel like I'm wearing anything, maybe just like a touch of concealer. Next for concealer, I actually have a product from Gosh. I haven't used their stuff in so, so long, but I used to swear by their foundation literally when I first started YouTube. But there were a bunch of products on sale, like on offer, on clearance or whatever. So I don't know if Gosh is like going anywhere, but either way, I thought I would try this out. So this is the high coverage concealer and I got it in the shade natural. Ooh, okay, we got a big doe foot. So I'm gonna go under my eyes with that and just blend it out. I don't know how quickly this dries, so I'm gonna go one eye at a time. Oh, it blends out a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was maybe gonna be too dark for me, but it's actually not a bad color. Feels like it's dragging on the skin just a bit. It might be because it, it does seem to be really, really full coverage, but it's not like the easiest thing to blend out. It's not like, you're not gonna work up a sweat or anything like that, but you do have to make sure that the edges are kind of blended out enough. It's full coverage though. Like, fair enough. It's very, very difficult to find a super, super full coverage concealer for really, really cheap, but this, this is giving me coverage and I'm very pleased about that. Do you guys wanna know something disgusting that like, I actually hate to admit? I haven't used Bye Bye Undry in a long time. And I don't know if this is like a new era of Steph here. Like, did I just reference myself in the third person? I think I kind of did. But yeah, I this is probably the longest I've ever gone without using Bye Bye Under Eye. I might need to go to the doctors and do a test because I'm not sure, I'm not sure that's normal for me. I'm gonna blend that up onto my lid and brow a little bit as well. My only concern with this is it might look kind of cakey when you do powder it down. And it's something that you will need to powder down just because it is quite sheeny shiny under the eye. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I wanna love this but that's, that's like my prediction. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, what else we've got? I need a tiny little bit here and I'm just gonna go over a couple of spots as well. My belly is rumbling and I bought a pasty before I started filming. Do you guys actually know what a pasty is? Like a proper one. I don't wanna hear anything about like, look, okay, Londoners, I love ya, but the whole Cornish pasty thing at Paddington Station and at like uh, the airport, can't remember which one it is, Gatwick, I think. That hurts my soul when, cause it's it's not Cornish. It's very upsetting. But if you guys don't know what a pasty is, I'm gonna insert a picture of one here. I don't doubt that most of you guys from England will know what they are, but it's basically pastry that's typically filled with like potato, meat, onions, like a sort of gravy-ish kind of thing. I think it's mostly just like the juice from the meat. What else? You can sometimes have carrot in there, Swedes, but it's these kind of half circle shaped pastries that are just filled with all the good stuff. You can get cheese and onion ones, you can get chicken, you can get like anything put in them. Uh, but fun fact, miners, here's a little like history lesson. Miners basically used to have them and half of it would normally be filled with like steak or mince or something. And then the other half would be filled with like a dessert, kind of like 
I think it's like custard and jam and stuff. And the crust, which is the best bit, honestly, I, I can't believe I've actually turned into one of those Cornish people that just talk about pastas all the time. The crust was what they held on to. That's the best bit though. Like if, if you ever have one, you want to eat the crust. The crust is so good. But they used to hold on to that because they used to get like the coal and stuff all over the hands. So they would hold on to the crust and eat the pasty. And then you'd get the other side and it'd be like a dessert. So fun fact there, but yeah, pasties are great. Um, I'm really hungry as you can tell, which is why I'm just going off on a tangent about how much I love pasties, but shout out to pasties. Shout out if you're from Cornwall, actually. If any of you are from Cornwall, let me know. Okay, so I've blended all that out and it is very, very full coverage. I will hand it to this concealer, it is full. I'm just hoping that when I powder it down, it'll be, it won't be like too matte or anything like that. That wasn't, that wasn't an explanation. That was just me just going, still just thinking about my pasty. But yeah, another thing I picked up from the Gosh Sand was this powder here. This is the waterproof setting powder. Apparently it makes your makeup waterproof. I will have to try that for another day. Maybe I'll like stick my face in a bowl of water or something. I definitely did that in a video a few years ago. I like put my phone at the bottom of the bowl and dunked my face in water. Maybe I should do it again. So I'm gonna go in first with a big fluffy brush all over my face because I wanna use the most minimal amount of powder on my under eyes. So I'm just gonna lightly tap that in. I'm gonna make sure I keep a close eye on my face because as soon as it starts looking too matte, I'm gonna stop. Okay, I used a very, very minuscule amount of powder and this is going a long way. So you really don't need a lot of this. It looks pretty good. Like on the rest of my face, it's matte, don't get me wrong, but I'm happy with this level of matte. So now I'm gonna take the lightest hand and I'm actually gonna show you how much powder I'm gonna take. I'm literally gonna take this much and I'm gonna tap it in the lid and really blend it around. And I'm gonna put that under my eyes. Yeah, I feel like that was a good shout. I'm happy with how that looks, but I wouldn't want it to go any more sort of dry and matte looking. So if you do use this combo together, I would say use the tiniest amount because I don't really think that that concealer necessarily needs setting down. It felt like it was quite set on my face, but it did have a bit of a sheen to it. So you only want a tiny little bit just to kind of take away the shine. Like I'm literally taking the tiniest amount. Can you barely even see that on my brush there? And I'm just gonna go down at my nose with that as well. I think that looks quite nice. It is quite heavy, but I also, I'm partial to like a full on cake face sometimes, all the time. But I'll give you guys a little close up so you can see. And yeah, my under eyes, that's like as much as I would wanna push it. I feel like any more matte or any more full coverage, it would just look a little bit, it would just look a little bit much. However, literally already, I am noticing quite a bit of creasing. I'm gonna see if I can fix that and maybe just kind of blend it away there. But that is one of the downsides to first of all getting older. When I think about the fact that in like, I'm gonna be 29 in January, which then means that it's almost a year until I'm 30, which is wild. I would like those two years back of our lives after like COVID and stuff. I would like those two years back because I would still be like 26. I'd be 26, almost 27. Like I prefer that. But yeah, as I was saying, that's one of the downsides when you do use something a bit more matte, a bit more full coverage on your under eyes when you are getting older. They crease, they move. So that is just another thing to know. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there for the powder and everything for a minute and just kind of see how my skin reacts to that. Next, I'll move on to bronzer, blusher, all that good stuff. And I'm not sure, I'm like kind of cheating here. I didn't actually have a bronzer. I thought I did from the drugstore, but I don't. But you can get Rude Cosmetics in some boot stores. And this is their No Filter 3D Face Palette. And as you can see, it's got a high, that was rude, excuse me. A highlighter, a blusher, and then also a bronzer. So I'm gonna go in with this bronzer called Threshold first. It's a nice palette, it's like good quality. I feel like I need to try out more stuff from Rude Cosmetics. But I'm gonna go in first of all with a little brush just to see how this color kind of works for me because I might go in with a bigger brush in a second. Actually looks like quite a similar color to the chocolate bronzer from Too Faced. Yeah, I feel like I can definitely go in with a slightly larger brush with this. I'm just gonna focus it just in there just to go with some cheekbones that I don't really have. And then I'm gonna go in with a bigger brush like I usually do and just bring that up a little bit higher. I tend to do this just cause I use a slightly more dense brush to contour and then I'll buff this in a bit more lightly with a looser brush. And also go down my neck a bit. Try to cover up that patchy tan. Try not to get it on my white shirt. 
Now that I'm adding more powder products to my skin, I can definitely see it's starting to look a bit more matte, which I don't know how I feel about just yet. I'm now gonna take the Wild Ride blusher, which looks pretty pigmented actually. I'm using the same brush. Very pigmented. I barely even touched my skin then. I know you guys like it when I put on blusher, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more for you today, okay? I'm gonna go like over my nose a bit, take a tiny little bit even on my forehead. I find that just gives you that like slightly sun-kissed look when you've got a little bit of warmth to your face as well. There's a fly in this room. I can hear it, I can't see it. I can see it. Oh God, stop attacking the ceiling. It's just like banging its head on the ceiling over and over again. Stay there, okay? You can stay there, we can be friends. Just stay there. Rubbing his little legs together, he's like, hey, 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 I'm about to screw your video up. So now I'm gonna go in with this highlighter here called Pure Illusion. I'm so shaky today, it's probably from all the caffeine that I've had, but this looks like that. That is like ice white. Let's see what you got, come on. I feel like I need to shave my face again soon. My face is looking a little bit hairy. There ain't nothing wrong with a hairy face, but that's like all I can notice when I'm like right up close. Woo, okay, that is, yeah, hella icy. It's like almost silver. Wow. This will probably be the perfect color if you're a little bit fairer than me. I would personally probably use this as like a highlight topper. So I'd put something a bit more champagne-y around the majority of my cheek and then hit the high points with this. But saying that, I'm still gonna slather my face in it. So just ignore me really. But yeah, that is, that is intense. Very, very intense. This palette is quite nice. It is quite a matte formula, like all the formulas, even the ones with shimmer in, they are quite dry looking on the skin. But that's fine because now I can go in with this stuff here, the Light Luster Shimmer Spray from MUA. So you can see it looks like this and then you give it a shake and it looks like that. So it's very similar to the Iconic London one. They had three different shades. They had one that was like more bronzy than this and they had one that was more like silvery pink. The smell of it, it's quite faint, but like in the bottle, it smells like something I had when I was literally a kid. But yeah, looking a little bit matte right now, apart from the intense highlighter on my cheeks, but hopefully this will be able to add a little bit of hydration to my face. Oh yeah, that smell, honestly, smell takes me back. Oh, it did it, it did it, guys. Those of you that have stuck around for a while in my old house, you will remember that one time, I speak about it like probably way too often, when I used the Revela Revelation, Revolution um, setting spray like this and it was just, it ruined all of my makeup. This isn't that, it's not on that scale, but I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to pick it up on the macro, but there's like, there is little glitter particles on my face that hopefully I'll be able to kind of buff away a few of them. I mean, you can see this like, glittery bits in my eyebrow there. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. It is very, very glittery. Now that I look at it closer, there's like, there's pretty hefty chunks of glitter in there. Let me see if I can show you guys as best as possible. Yeah, you can see there is quite a bit of glitter in there. And I don't feel like it's fully covered my face. I'm not looking like a full on disco ball, but there are a few little specks that I would like to get rid of, but otherwise, it has definitely added a nice little glow to my skin. I feel like the pigments in it are nice. If they could just take out the glitter and just keep like the shimmer pigments as opposed to the glitter, I feel like that would be way better. So not my favorite. It's not quite a Gypsy Iconic London one because that one is just chef's kiss, but it is a lot better than the Revolution one. Like I feel like a lot of brands try to copy the Iconic London one. Some of them are really good at it. Some of them just stick like eyeshadow in a setting spray and go, there you go. Um, so this one's all right. Just, I'd probably use it from like quite a far way away, just so you're not getting like loads of glitter on your face. You might like glitter on your face. It does look quite nice on my skin in general. Like it has added a nice sheen to the rest of my skin. I would just like get rid of the glitter particles and just stick with the shimmer ones, but it's not bad. So now I think I'm actually gonna do my lips before I do my eyes, just because I only have one lip color. So I wanna make sure it like matches my eyes. So the lip liner that I have is from Rimmel. This is the lasting finish in the shade Cappuccino. It's like a really, really nice cool tone brown. Oh, it's a bit dry. It's like mildly scratching my lips as I use it, but the color's nice. Yeah, the color's nice. It's quite pigmented. It's just a little bit scratchy. It's probably better actually to put a little bit of lip balm on. 
Next time I use this, I'm definitely gonna put lip balm on beforehand because it is just a little bit dry. But yeah, I do really love the color. I'm just gonna fan that in my lips a tiny bit. It's so scratchy. Yeah, definitely do yourself a favor before you use this. Put lip balm or something on underneath because my lips, you know when you use like a, like a tingling lip gloss or something, like a plumping one, and your lips kind of hurt a little bit? That's what it feels like, but it's kind of more down to the fact that it was just like scratching the skin of my lips. So to save my lips a little bit and just kind of blend everything out a bit more nicely, I'm gonna go in with this gloss from NYX. It's in collaboration with Sex Education. I haven't actually seen the new season, um, but yeah, this is in the shade Bit of Honey. I'm actually a big fan of NYX glosses, like they're butter glosses, so I wonder if this is a similar formula. It smells really good, but this one here is in the shade Bit of Honey. Oh, that's what I need. My lips are like, yes, nourish us. I'll show you guys what the color looks like on its own, just so you can see. It's quite like a warm toned nude. Super glossy, very, very glossy. I probably could have only done with a tiny little touch of that in the middle. I'm just gonna fill in the outer part of my lips a touch more, now that they don't resemble the Sahara Desert. Ooh, that's quite a nice nude, isn't it? It's not very often that I'm excited by a glossy lip, but I actually really, really like that combo. So now I'm gonna paint my eyeballs using this palette here from Flower Beauty. This is in the shade Sugar Rush. Comes with a nice little brush that actually looks quite nice. And I'll show you guys a close up of how all the colors look. But hopefully that shade, the, this one, this looks so, so nice in person. Let's give it a little swatch. Oh, that is pretty. Oh, oh my God, that is so freaking nice. It's like a, a purpley pinky brown almost, but also with a bit of blue in it. I feel like that's gotta go like all over my eyeball. I'm just gonna prime my eyes with my P. Louise base like I normally do. And I'm gonna start off by taking this shade here right in the middle, which is like this really intense, kind of like magenta shade. And I'm gonna focus that mostly on the outer corner for now. Ooh, hello pigment. I'm gonna make sure that I get a really nice blend going on. I don't wanna take it up too high, so I'm just making sure that I concentrate just kind of on the outer corner. Okay, I'm gonna leave the blend there for a second. I'm gonna blend it out more in a minute, but I just wanna build up more on my outer corner. When you apply this quite densely, it's really, really pigmented. This is actually way more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be. Sorry, Drew Barrymore, but yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with that so far. Just slowly starting to bring that more so into my inner corner now. And I'm then gonna go in with this shade here on the same brush, it's like a lighter pink. And I'm gonna bring that ever so slightly more into my inner corner. I'm gonna go back in with a bit more P. Louise base because honestly, I feel like it's just over blended a bit here. That is one of the best things about the P. Louise base though, is that you can just kind of put it back over the top and it does just sort of fix everything. And I'm gonna start to fan that upwards a little bit. I feel like my brows are like looking a bit sad. I wasn't actually planning on doing any kind of cut crease or anything, but screw it, let's do a little half cut crease. I'm gonna take some more of my base. I need to give this a bit of a mix actually. So just a little bit of my P. Louise base there. And I'm gonna whack that on my lid, give myself a little look around and then fill that in. And then again, I'm just gonna tap the edges of that in with the brush that I first applied it with. Then I'm gonna go in with the hero color in this palette. I am so excited for this. I hope it's good. See what you got. Come on, please be good. Please be good. Oh, why is it doing that? Okay, this isn't just me. I was just trying to pick the product up and it's literally like scraping off, is it? That's not a cream, is it? It feels more emollient than the other shadows, but it, it's a powder, it's not a cream. I'm gonna use my finger instead. That's a lot better, but it's not ideal when I need to fill in my little cut crease. Ooh, does kind of make my eyelids look a little bit like a ball bag. I'm gonna take the brush that I was actually using for my cut crease to see if I can pick up the products better when it's wet. Yeah, even doing that, it's quite sheer. To get the pigmentation that I want, I'm literally like digging the product and slapping it on my eyelids. Oh man, that sucks, I was excited about that one. Yeah, like what has happened to that eyeshadow? I'm gonna go in with the third shade. 
and go over half of that on the outer corner and kind of blend that into the matte purple that I did. That sucks about that bluey color. Like it does look quite pretty. I just look like I have ball bags for eyelids. Maybe I do. Let's blend the tea. Take a bit more of that matte purple that I used because it has been blended out a bit there. And then I'm gonna blend out all the edges and I'll clean up the edge a little bit as well. Yeah, that's a shame. I don't feel like I'm loving that as much as I wanted to. I'm gonna take some of the second shade here, just in this little pencil brush, and this is doing the same kind of thing. Crease-free formula. Say that to my ball bag eyeballs. Say it, say it to their ball bag faces. Crease-free. Oh my God, this fly is driving me crazy. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of that second shade and put that in the inner corner. I'm having to just like layer up quite a lot and you know, the P. Louise base makes everything pop even more. I went in three times with that inner corner. I'm gonna take the first highlighter that I used, the really, really icy one, and see if that looks better. That's so much more intense. Yeah, I don't think I'm much of a fan of that Flower Beauty eyeshadow palette, to be honest. You know, it, it does the job. It's like, if that's all you've got, you'll be all right. You know, your world's not gonna end. But yeah, not really. Maybe that's why I don't really hear too many people talking about it. Cause it's not, it's not that great. Yeah. Then I'm just gonna go in with this brown shade on my under eyes. Honestly, these eyeshadows are a bit of a mess. I was like, I really wanted to love this, but like there's, there's a lot of kickback and not, I mean, this brown's quite pigmented, but all the other colors, like not that great. Yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of that. I'm not gonna lie. Hopefully Flower Beauty can redeem themselves now because I also have one of their mascaras to try out. This is the Lash Warrior. Packaging is cool. It looks like this. We've got a big chunky plastic wand. Come on, can you redeem yourself Flower Beauty? Give it a nice little wiggle in my lashes. Oh, that gripped it then. That was a nice little feeling. When it does that, like when a mascara kind of like pulls at my lashes a little bit, I'm like, okay you mean business. Cue me getting a million bits of mascara on my eyelid. It's fine. That's why I go off camera so I can clear up all the things that I can't see. Because if I put a, if I put my mirror up like this and actually do my mascara how I would normally, you guys can't see shit. So I have to like try and do things from far away. And then sometimes when I come back and sometimes when I look a lot better, it's just cause I've actually been able to, you know, see my face. Fair enough, that is quite nice. I would like maybe a little bit more length on the outer corner. I was trying to build it up there, but it wasn't really doing much, but I am pretty happy with that. I'm gonna go on my lower lashes as well. I might add some liner in a bit. I'll kind of see how everything looks in a second. Yeah, I don't mind that mascara. It's not like, I'm not blown away by it, but it's not doing anything wrong. So that's actually not bad. You redeem yourself there, Flower Beauty. So now for my lashes, I'm gonna go in with these brand new ones from Kiss. These are the My Lash But Better ones and these are in the style So Real. And you can see they just look like this. So what I'm gonna do, which is what I normally do with lashes anyway, I'm gonna cut off the ends and just turn them into like three quarter length ones just to sort of lift my eye up a little bit. It says they have a super fine band and to be fair, I mean, you can obviously see where the lashes start but you can't really see the actual band itself. So yeah, I'm very intrigued. So yeah, I'm gonna go off camera, add some lashes, do the other eye, and then I'll check back with you guys for the final look. All right guys, so this is the finished look, and I kind of take back some of the things that I said because now I put a tiny little bit of the, um, my words have gone, liner. Why was that so difficult? Now that I've put a little bit of liner on my inner corner and I've added the lashes, which I am obsessed with, I actually quite like this look. There's a couple of things I would like to change. Like it is a little bit speckly from the glitter, which isn't ideal. Like you guys won't be able to see it, but I, it just annoys me looking at it close up. The brows, I was really kind of into the brow product at first. I don't know if it's because I used it first. Maybe it would help if I used it like as one of the last steps, but my brows haven't really stayed in place and I haven't touched them or anything. And I can't move my eyebrows that much, like, because I have Botox and stuff. So like, this is the only movement I've actually got in my eyebrows. It's not like I'm like wiggling my eyebrows all over the place. I'm sure a lot of you think my eyebrows look better like this and I respect your opinion, but I want them like scraped up onto my foreheads. So yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. I will try it again and let you guys know how I get on in the comments down below as well as everything else in this video. But yeah, these lashes, 
I am obsessed with them. I'm not very good at doing lashes. It's probably one of the things that I'm worst at in regards to makeup, but I put these on so quickly. I squished them into my own lashes and it was like no fuss, no faff. You can't see the band or anything. Like you literally cannot see the band. I can't wink with this eye. Can you guys wink with both eyes? Like this is the best I can do. It's not the most attractive. I'm like this side I can just, hey. But this side I'm like, all right. I once got hit in the face with a shoe and I've always kind of felt like that's the reason why I can't. But I got hit in the face with a shoe on this side. So it actually doesn't make any sense, but that's my reasoning. It's not because I'm incapable, it's because injustice. But yeah, overall, I am pretty happy with how this makeup turned out now that everything is sort of all finished. I like the lip products. I actually, again, can't, can't wink. I actually quite like how the look turned out now that I've got lashes on and liner and stuff. I actually really like the base as well. That's why I don't tend to have too much of an opinion when I am doing my base at the start, because now everything's sort of meshed down into my skin. It looked super matte but now it has like a nice little glow to it. It's settled into my skin a lot more and I actually really, really like it. As always guys, let me know what you think of this makeup look in the comment section down below. I have a hair in my mouth. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and give this video a thumbs up because it really, really does help me out a lot. And also subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time and only half of my viewers that actually watch my videos are subscribed. So just like imagine, imagine if like everyone that actually watched my videos and liked them, subscribes, imagine. Let me know what other brands you guys want me to review in the comments section down below or if there's any other products in particular you want me to try because I'm always down. But apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.